Wow. Thank you for standing by. It's Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek. Welcome to another wonderful hour of the Cisco Day. I hope everybody's been enjoying the day so far. It is my pleasure to bring you the way we do things in Portal 47 here in Trekland and take you backstage to the folks that make, make really make the starships fly on all those sound stages. And, uh, you know, there's so many people that work behind the scenes of Star Trek, but since this is the Cisco Day and we're talking about Mr. Avery Brooks and that character of Cisco and then everything about Star Trek, but through a DS9 lens, I wanted to get together some folks that not only work behind the scenes on DS9, but were they're on the stages pretty much. Not, I mean, you know, the visual effects guys are often and gals are off in their labs and shooting models, and the writers and their assistants are in the offices, mm -hmm. and all the creative, you know, prop mm -hmm. people, makeup costume people would come down to the stages. But um, I wanted to circle around and, and have a hub there so we can talk about Avery and just the way things were, all the cast and the crew and the way things work. So it is so exciting to have with us. I've got Dennis Madalone, stunt coordinator for DS9 and also Next Generation and Enterprise. I mean, oh, sorry, and uh, Voyager. And Robin Marcelli, who is one of the senior stand-ins the first team stand-ins and you saw her on stage as her bajoran extra and alien guys and all that so yay yay robin yeah. you're you're a great resource for remembering all those years and then lou race who is first ad for the last alternating uh, first uh, uh, first assistant director right. for the last four seasons three or four yeah from season of, I think I said you came in with the Defiance. So right. Yes, I came in with. The I mean, I mean, you came in with on the Defiance. You came the, in yeah. with Worf, is what I was saying. So mm -hmm. we are thrilled to have everybody here. So I have a few photos we could pop up from now, uh, just <laughs> just as an introduction. Let me um, let me just say. So if you want, if you need some cred for Dennis, here's Dennis with some of the stunt team for Battle Lines back in uh, first season. Mm -hmm. Who's who's in that shot with you, Dennis? Well, on uh, my right side or right of me uh, is Kenny Lesko, a great, great stunt friend of mine and just a talent. I mean, uh, the guy's just just a ground eater, you know. And then next mm -hmm. to him is Pat Tallman. Everyone knows Pat. And mm -hmm. then that's uh, Tom Morga. And to my left is Joe Murphy and mm -hmm. uh, one of the other stunt buddies. So, <laughs> yeah. A lot so, of grime, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Pat uh, Tallman obviously went on and had the her role of uh, the other Lita on Babylon Five. So yeah, yeah. And you know, while yeah. she was doing that role, she still kept sneaking over to come to our show to get beat up. So it was <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And Tom Morga has just been around for ages and ages and did so many yeah. things over the years. All right, um, let me see. Oh. It's a little slow motion. Let me, there we go. I was going to say, so Robin, your, your, your main paycheck, if I can say that was you were Nana's stand in, right? For, for a bit. Um, yeah. I wasn't photo double, but I did stand in for her off and on throughout the whole entire show, but she had several stand ins in between uh, that looked more like her supposedly. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I mostly, I stood in for her at whenever there wasn't somebody there. And then I also stood in for, like Louise Fletcher and uh, most of the, a lot of the uh, ladies that were on the show. Well, why don't we take a second and uh, talk about, I mean, I think everybody, we'll, we'll talk more about stunts, Dennis, and we'll get to a little bit. We say stand in, a lot of people, they even confuse it with stunt people standing in. So why don't you tell everybody what, the partly it wasn't even such about the look is uh, like height and height. hair color and tell us what stand in, what it took. Well, what you do is you, What's you go walk into the set as they're um, rehearsing a scene and you, whoever you're covering that day, if it's Nana or Louise or um, any, any of the ladies that were, worked on Salome, um, you watch the scene and you watch what they do. And as I'm going along watching the scene, there's a camera person, second assistant usually, marking wherever her she stops or whatever she's doing. So I have to basically repeat and copy whatever she's done and then if something changes in between or a uh, mark changes when that when the actor comes back on the stage I, I usually inform them as to if there were any changes so that they didn't get messed up and they looked really good 
when they were actually doing their part. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's what I did. And then usually we were, we were in, a lot of times we were in a uniform too. I was either wearing a military uniform or some kind of civilian uniform as a Bajoran. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyway, but yes. So, uh, you know, they lit they lit us the, the the grips and everybody they put the lights on us and we stood there for quite a while so that they um could light us pr appropriately so that the actor right. would look you know wonderful under this yeah well and even work out blocking and things too right yeah sometimes but, yeah yeah but yeah. you really had to follow it and they expected you to know you know where you were supposed to go from point a to point b to point c you know and then that helped to get you know go along quicker yeah. Well, even if they worked out the blocking, the movement, and were taping down on the you know floor for you guys, mm -hmm. what didn't it fall? Did it fall on you when the first team, when the regulars came in? What did it fall on you to kind of just tell each one of you told your person? Well, I always asked. Sometimes actors don't like that, but most of our actors were really open to it. They they liked knowing if there were any changes so that they could mm -hmm. run through it and then miss something. So. They, in my opinion, they, they already always accepted and liked to know what they didn't have to think about it. They could just say, OK, the, then I go there or it's a little bit of a different camera angle mm -hmm. something like that. And I would let them know what that was as much as possible so that they looked good when they came out and did their scene. Yeah. yeah. And uh, let me see. I've got just kind of an intro piece here. So. Uh, uh, oh. I'll bring that in. So here's Lou at work. So there's the great Rick Colby, you know, late great Rick, uh, did so many hours of Star Trek, Next Gen and Voyager and DS9 and Enterprise. And uh, there's some guy over there wearing a red shirt. I can't believe he's still alive. Um, <laughs> so this was one of the, uh, I've, oh, I've got, this is one of the kidnapped Worf and Esri episodes um, from, from final season there. Well, so Lou, tell us, like we say first assistant director, and that's another one of those things. There's first assistants and second assistants and key seconds and all of that. And uh, it's ironic because of all the crew on the stage, a lot of times the director, even when they're a regular director, like Rick was, but it's like the director is the person that's the least familiar with the cast and crew and the and all that. Right. I mean, that's, your, that's part of your job is to keep them consistent. Well, it certainly is on episodic television. On episodic television, right. uh, the crew has a continuity, the cast has a continuity, and many directors, not a director like Rick, but, but they come in for the first time, mm -hmm. and they don't know how the show runs, and they don't know what people like. They don't know what the producers like. Uh, and, you know, they don't know, here's how you have to deal with this actor, here's how you have to deal with another actor. Uh, so the first AD sort of is their uh their user's manual to the show yeah. and and points out you know things you should do things you shouldn't do and um and just accommodate them to the show and the show to them obviously when you've got somebody like rick who's been doing it for a long time well number one rick's been doing it for a long time beyond star trek so he knows how a multitude of types of shows work and then on top of that he becomes familiar with star trek and he knows how star trek works uh it's handy for a uh first assistant director to have a director who's familiar with the show so you can sort of get into a show shorthand there's a lot of information that you have to share there's a lot of things you have to be aware of i have to be inside his head a lot or mm -hmm. her head a lot and it hope and it helps if you know that they that you and they are both working from the same basic principles or points of view towards the show um other than that um what my specific duties are for anybody any director on any show is you get a script and just like this okay what, see I, what see the, what's the title what is see it how pretty um, uh -huh. this is the uh one of the drafts of what you leave behind the last oh episode. now super thick well no it's about that's average um 
<laughs> what you what you can tell is it's yellow. Okay, why isn't it white? Because it's been revised. And up here in the corner, if I can, if you can see this, yeah, you can right mm -hmm. there. That gives a list of the revisions and the dates, and also the color of the pages. Uh, back in the old days, when people actually had printed scripts and didn't have them all in their computers, you would print out changes on a, a succession of different colored pages so that everybody would know, aha, there's something new I see. Mm -hmm. And they'd also know, wait a minute, you've got yellow pages. I've only got pink and blue. You know, where are my, where are my additional pages? Um, but it, so anyway, after you get done working a script, mm -hmm. uh, oh, come on. Show me a script that it, you know, you start putting uh, all, kinds, all kinds of lines and mm -hmm. boxes and little notes on it, uh, which tell you things that you've talked about, ways things are going to be done. Uh, you know, I usually put th I usually put things like number of stunt people or number of extras going to be involved in the sh in the scene, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, from that, you. You, you just work out the shooting schedule of the show. Star Trek was a little bit easier than a lot of shows because 90% of it took place on permanent sets of the space oh. station or the ship. So it wasn't like you had to go to Pacoima to find a house. Um, <laughs> but but they did have they did have you know special sets that were you know right. um, the Ferengi the Ferengi Palace etc cetera, etc cetera, that had to be built and you had to accommodate giving the art department time to do those special sets, you know, within the scope of your shooting schedule. I was going to say, there's not a lot of things you can say about Star Trek where you say Star Trek was easier than most shows because Star Trek was a lot, well, was a lot of work. It, it, yeah. it, it, easier in that, easier in, in makeup. Well, the makeups themselves were difficult, but, mm -hmm. you know, they, they never changed very much. I mean, you never got anybody beaten up badly. Or usually, wardrobe was pretty, was pretty much a cinch. Um, day night mm -hmm. was pretty much a cinch, as long as you were on the spaceship. Yeah, I was going to say. So, so we're having. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to get used to this. We're having um, having conversation here about. Uh, let me do this. We're having a conversation about this is uh, Cisco Day, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to bring back a cool bit here. Boom. Speaking of the man himself. So this was just one shot I had I had in my archives. My This was a studio picture, Dennis. And it's uh, from the Jim Hadar, he and Quark's big camping trip that goes awry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're obviously working with Avery. What's it? Do you have an Avery story working on stunts? Was he... Um, pretty gung-ho to do his own or was he a little you know how, how did you approach when you had stunt scenes with Avery you know when we started prepping the pilot um and I heard that Avery was doing you know starring in it mm -hmm. I immediately was excited because uh he was on a another tv series and and he was a uh, a fighter a boxer so I knew right away yeah. um when I meet Avery, I just he's going to be involved with so much action, so many fight scenes, and I, I knew that um, I wanted to talk to him and break the ice, and I and just find out, uh, you know, does he like doing his, his own action? And, and so on the pilot, we just immediately kicked off and just got along great. I knew he was going to be handy. You know, I always brought in stunt doubles when it came to, you know, the battles and. Avery hitting the ground and stuff, but I usually took the stunt doubles, uh, may it be John Bennett or Alan Olney, and they they were ready to go. But Avery was so great. I mean, his fighting skills were spot. Whatever I showed him, he was just instantly right on it. His energy is huge in the battles. Um, he the stunt guys end up sitting on the bench, you know, watching, you know, Avery do all the fight mm -hmm. stuff. So that that was cool. One of my neat things with uh, 
is he was directing one one episode and uh i didn't know how to work with him as a director as a stunt coordinator and an actor it was a whole we were loose it was cool it was great now it's only directing all directors are different you have to mold yourself into and he was more quiet and we'd be on the promenade and i'd be laying out the actions and walking through everything to see if he liked it and out of nowhere he'll look at it he'll think and he'll go not alone not alone <laughs> and that means and i started catching on i go that means he likes it i guess so, <laughs> while directing his first episode one extreme every, or the other yeah every time we did a, a stunt scene uh instead of saying print or if he liked it or not he would go not alone not alone and so that was my connection with him that i never forgot of all the directors he was the only one that just you know would, would call out my last name and smile with this great energy um yeah he's, he's he was he was too good for cut print or whatever i guess, yeah, it was I almost, guess. Almost like we have to telepathically talk this way and magically because we known each other for a few years before he started directing it just really was telepathic when i when yeah. i worked with him. um so that was that was really cool i really miss him his he, he's just an amazing person um there's another story that maybe people don't know about him you know going into season six i think um one of his best buddies his hairdresser is ron smith right lou you know ron right robin you know ron he's just a great hairstylist and just a great person and we all love Ron and uh, and uh, Ron was spending some time in the hospital, you know, battling. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know until uh, a few years after Ron passed away, um, his wife, Marilyn, came up to me and she told me a hidden secret <laughs> about Avery and that uh, uh -huh. when uh, they were going to let ron leave the hospital because the, the bills were too much and uh avery went to the hospital went up mm -hmm. to the doctors and everything and just gave his credit card and said he ain't going anywhere and avery gave his credit card and they just 30 40 000, whatever it was avery just wanted to make sure ron was okay so there's there's things that are amazing about cisco i mean cisco <laughs> avery and that's yeah. one of them just and there's thousands of them. He's just a giver. He's he's what you see on the set um, is what you get in real life. I mean, he really his heart is golden. So that's that's uh, that's amazing. And that was his his stunt double. Oh, uh, Ron Smith was his hairdresser. Oh, hairdresser, hairdresser. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Ron Smith. I, I do. And, yeah. And Ron Smith, he's a great character. And him and Avery were just buddies all the time. And I known Ron since I was 19 years old working. You know, Ron used to hide my hair so I didn't have to cut it. So he always took care of me. But uh, I love Ron. He he was like a father to me. And and uh, I wasn't surprised to know uh, that Avery did that for Ron. Um, right. I'm sure he did many people. Right, right. Well, let me bring everybody else back in. There we go. Boom. Yeah. Now we've got uh, cameras. Um, that was a, that was a great story. I mean, I can attest to some other things too that you know but when when you we talk i think i sent you a picture of, of ron doing avery on one of the um let me find that that's that was yeah ron. I, I just okay yeah that's ron doing his makeup on on one of the shows and you uh, dennis you may uh, remember which show this is if he if he if he can show the picture i'll get it Here but ron go. was ron was great he was actually he was like a celebrity almost yeah. because mm -hmm. avery was just yeah there he is that's ron yeah and this is uh oh he was only, he only pretty much did avery mm -hmm. yeah 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 you know a story about ron uh was since i go back to him since i was a kid on d space nine i was in a chair one day and he, he put in like 20 pins to pin my hair or 40 <laughs> pins and then he put the wig on and all day you know that's tight so the next day I go back and I said, you know what? I counted the pins. There was 42 pins that I bet you being a great hairstylist could do it under 40. And he looked at me. Yeah. He looked at, he looked at me like, 
you can't con a con, you know? He said, you know what he did? He put in 55 pounds. Mm -hmm. He just, you know? Teach you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and I was great. I'm surprised you didn't get to 47. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking this is from Sanctuary where, where uh, he and O'Brien are, he's going to be in the hot box later on or whatever but uh yeah okay mm -hmm. that's an well, I, there you go serendipity i'm glad you had that story and robin i'm glad you had the shot here because uh, yeah uh it's not exactly like makeup and hair people turn up in a lot of photography uh, yeah i know th that's that was my own shot so that i don't mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you'll see that one again exactly i mean i sent that to you because of who you know we were talking about him today well that's why um that's why uh, I love doing like what I do, Portal 47, because you guys bring your photos and we don't get to mm -hmm. see, you know, a lot of the stuff hasn't been out and published and all of that. Uh, oh yeah, we, yeah, great story. Um, I'm just looking, speaking of the photos, I was gonna look here for a minute. Let me cycle back around, um, where is it? Uh, I want to find, uh, come on, here it is. So, and Lou, this is you right here, but far beyond the stars. Yes. Which Avery is directing as well as, you know, his, Darian, right. what do you say? A bravura performance there? That doesn't, oh that's just, um, yeah. I will say that was a show that he was very much interested in and very much committed to. He thought it was an important story to tell and he wanted to do it right. I was still sort of a newcomer on the show. Mm -hmm. And when it fell, you know, into my squad in the rotation, he yeah. was just a little bit not quite sure. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I just got to do the best job I can for this guy. And um, he wasn't quite sure about what, you know, w would I get it? Would I get him? Would I get, you know, the relevance of the story? Um, he was very passionate. Yeah. Yeah, about, mm -hmm. about that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and especially this one. Yeah, and 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 to Dennis's point, when you worked with him, there's a lot of jazz inside Avery, inside his yes. rhythms, his mannerisms, and you got to realize that sometimes you're going to get stuff that's off the backbeat, or you know, just a little syncopated, and so once I determined that i said okay well okay i can ride with that and you know it mm -hmm. it got it, it got easier to work with him and um when he saw that i was uh you know committed to the show i well i'll tell you a story okay um the way in it if you remember the episode he he starts seeing intimations of the past or of this of this feature of this of, of this structure coming into Deep Space Nine. He sees mm -hmm. Mike Cohen in the baseball suit and other things. Mm -hmm. And finally he walks through a door and he finds himself in the middle of the street in New York circa 1952. Well, and, he's, yeah. and he gets hit by a cab. And so he, he had worked out a shot where we'd put the camera on a crane high high above the looking straight down at him sprawled on the on the ground with, with cars you know, spoked around him and people coming in to see what was wrong. It was the end of the teaser, end of act one, I'm not sure. Anyway, so we staged it and we told the actors what to do. And so they rolled. And of course, he's in the middle of the scene. There's no way he can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the extras came in and we'd, we'd instructed them to come in from all points of the compass. And they all came in through about three available avenues and the rest was empty. And so we went, so, you know, we hold on for a while. And since nobody else could do it, I was the one who went, who went cut. And Jonathan, uh, Jonathan West, the cameraman said, okay, that was great for camera. You know, what's next? And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can do this better. You know, and so I said, get people to come in from all directions so it looks yeah. more uniform. Even it up. And, yeah. and just to say, normally Avery would call cut, but he was in the scene. Yeah. So that was, it fell to you to call cut. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we did it again. And they all came in from all, all the other directions. And it act, and it looked much better. 
to my humble eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, yeah, I like that. And, and Avery was kind of said, what, what, well, he first of all, I said, he said, what was wrong? What was wrong with the one we just did? And I said, well, you know, everybody came in from over here and over here. Nobody came in from over there. And uh, it looked odd. Uh, it, it, it didn't look it didn't look symmetrical. Mm -hmm. It didn't look it, it didn't look like real movie life. Uh, and uh, so he was and OK, flash forward a half an hour. One of the producers comes over and kind of puts me in a corner and says, you know, when Jonathan says a, a shot is all right, you know, you should you, you shouldn't be saying that we have to do it again. All right. I mean, th th that costs us time, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it, we can't operate like that. And I said, I just thought the shot would not be as good for the episode as if we had people coming in from all directions. I wanted it to look right. Avery overheard that. And so suddenly now the the uh, the the mysterious new AD that he wasn't quite sure of, you know, had stepped out and said, you know, we're going to do this. And uh, I think he was impressed by that. I don't like to shine my own badge, but uh, I think that that sort of helped bond please us. Please do it because yeah. nobody shines an AD's badge. So please yeah. do it. <laughs> Isn't that true? Um, so it helped us bond through the rest of the thing because it, well, and that and the fact that, that he sort of realized I understood mm -hmm. how a movie was made and how a movie is supposed to look. But um for a TV show. And and Avery was in agreement with your decision. I thought you were going to say, no, he wanted it, you know, it's just yeah. here to have it be symmetrical. No. But. no. Yeah. yeah, but it was interesting on that show. Yes, having to call cut and 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 have and and then having to tell him uh uh that was pretty good except for this part. And yeah. and he'd say, "Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll we're going to do a close up. We'll get that then." Um yeah, but at the end, when he when when he went hysterical and fell on the floor, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there saying, "Okay, how long should I let this go?" Oh yeah, and I said, "I'll let it go long enough so that if he wants to do a long dissolve into something else, he's got enough footage." So I will let it go about thirty seconds. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> it seemed like a long time. And by the time we cut, like everybody was kind of looking at me. <laughs> How long did you want to make this man suffer? And, and I yeah. said, he's not suffering. He's acting. You know, that's, that's what he's here for. Well, what did Avery say later? Did he Avery, say you made the right he didn't call? Say any, he didn't say anything, but he, oh, but, oh, but I, but I felt that he, he, that, that he appreciated that I played the moment. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I I don't well no he was a professional he would if I'd stayed there ten minutes he would have done it for ten minutes he wouldn't have stayed he wouldn't have jumped off after three and said okay that's it I mean you got enough right uh, Mark mm -hmm. well I was gonna I was gonna say the fact that he didn't say anything was was uh, revealing that yeah mm -hmm. he was fine he was good and fine with it okay yeah. but, but that yeah. that was a real special show and yes. and it was fun to do because. Well, anytime you got in a hollow suite and you got off the station and you were doing not exactly Star Trek anymore what was sort of a refreshing change. And as you can see by by the dressing in that shot, they didn't they didn't stint on the sets or the look or the costumes or anything else. I mean, we had like 35 50s era cars working there and uh it was uh, in fact we hired an aide to do nothing but coordinate cars when we we're doing shots which was not a typical start what i remember about that i got to see it since it was on location it was on location in the new york street back lot and yeah. what i remember especially as the years went by was things got shot back there a lot but what you all did here with the cassie's diner set was do the, the those sets were built so that they could be used but nobody ever did it was always just walk by the sidewalk but you all decorated out the, the diner so you could walk in and out and you could look in and out the window yeah, and see that, the was cars. Great, that was important we wanted yeah. to have sort of a, a, and you've a got all, i don't know if anybody ate that stuff or it was fake or what it, what it no, looked like it, after five days but it was kidding 
everything was tasty and fresh and new and wonderful. Mm-hmm. We would, we would. Hey, uh, about that episode, you know, what, yeah. the when we did the Avery gets hit by a a cab. Yeah. Those old fashioned. I used John Bennett, and John Bennett is, is a a stand in, but uh, his you know Avery's photo double, but. I started using John uh, as a stuntman and I took John aside, John Bennett aside and I trained him for about a week to do that hit. And I must say that when we did it, John Bennett, it was spot on. He took a great hit, ate the ground. He didn't look like a stuntman. He looked like a, looked like Avery Brooks getting hit by, it just looked awkward and cool. It almost looked like a throwback hit from that era, you know? Oh, I was so proud of John and you know Avery. Avery smiled when he saw that car hit. He was just so proud that John Bennett did this great hit because not everyone can get hit by a car and get up afterwards. Yeah, exactly. It was great you gave him an opportunity to do that too because you know sometimes people can do things and they don't get the chance. And yeah, the no fact one. that you trusted him and you helped him that was awesome. Yeah, and a car hit you just don't give to anyone. You get the best car hit people that you can fuck for. But I took it I took it on my own and trained them and I liked what mm-hmm. I was seeing because it kept, you could do it. keep your head yeah. from hitting the windshield. And he kept doing that days before and that was it. I knew that um with me driving and controlling the speed and all that that uh, I could help sell it and help as he's hitting mm-hmm. it, I hit my brakes, I spit them off. So it just was everything. But at the end of that stunt, when we printed it, I I just remember Avery being so happy, but he was not as happy as me because inside, I don't think I've been any happier to see one of my stunt people at a thousands of stunt performances Mm -hmm. and me coordinating. I was so happy and proud of his performance. I was, I went home as if I was hit by the Mm -hmm. car. I was really happy. That was cool. Well, I I was gonna say. Hey, I have to tell you. I was so happy that uh, when I got him up, you know, we had that little uh, gizmo, you know, on his uniform. That little yeah, the combat. Yeah. I pulled it off him <laughs> and I, said, I opened his hand. I put it. I said, you take this home and always remember this great moment and this great mm-hmm. day. And he took it home. He goes, I'll get in trouble. I go, no, you just tell him I gave it. Well, I got a call the next day. Don't, don't you ever give away <laughs> yeah. that more trouble. So I got in trouble for that, but you know what? <laughs> he never gave it back. It was great. I love how over all the years, you know, like you get yelled. You, and I say this, whatever, but uh, you know, you get pulled aside or you get told, you know, somebody comes mm-hmm. down to say 30 minutes later or the next day, Hey, you gave away a batch. Hey, you did an extra mm-hmm. take. But I mean, you guys were under such, everybody was under pressure, time pressure. And we think about money and budget, but mu- time is money. But it's it's all the thing you're working. Yeah. The fact that you guys were turning out one hour movies, you know, in the eighties, and they're and they're cut and they're doing the same thing today. They're doing these little these little you know movies now. They got more money and it looks more cinema with all the digital and the <laughs> AR wall and all that. But it's every era's the original series was pushing the envelope and trying to do way more than anybody else would just be you know doing a one hour drama, cashing their paychecks every week. Yeah. And you guys. Well, I will. I will say too that Star Trek put the money where it counted. I mean, it was all on the screen. It was on the actors. It was on the costumes. It was on the sets. Uh, it was on the effects. Um, uh, the production values were good. I mean, they, they did not cheap out. If something, if something was inordinately expensive for a particular episode, uh, they kind of walk around it for two days and then they'd say, "Okay, we'll do it." You know. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, uh, uh, Star Trek, uh, Paramount was not losing money on Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, and still isn't. I mean, they no. weren't then, much less now. No, yeah. Star Trek is to Paramount what cartoon characters are to Warner Brothers and Disney. Right. They're they're the the infinite and endless source of income. Hmm. Well, I was. Uh, yeah, I was going to say those. So the stories you were telling. Here we go. Got got her back. The stories you were telling about Avery, both of you, I was going to ask Robin, did you have yeah. uh, a, a moment with, you know, something that you shared I, I, or a I, memory? He was somebody that I, I, I love. I, some people have different feelings about him, but I, I love the guy. 
he was always, I think when he, after he's with you for a while, he kind of checks people out to see if they get him. Mm -hmm. And I just thought he was just wonderful to be around for the most part. He was interesting. He was smart. He thought out of the box. <clears throat> I loved how his, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, how he, he was, a, I thought, a fabulous actor. And um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Can you give me some water? Yes. Um, yeah. And unconventional would be a good word. Unconventional, but <laughs> yeah. he called me more Sally. I could hear him yelling me my name too. But he, he, he was very loyal to people. Mm -hmm. And he was very good. If he thought that you were somebody that he could trust around him and stuff like that, he was, he was one, a really great guy to be around. Mm -hmm. I love watching him work. I love watching him direct and I love watching his brain do, you know, mm -hmm. what, I mean, he's always thinking of trying to make it better. And, um, well, I, I'm, I'm I appreciated just, and respected him a lot. Yeah. I'm he just sitting here thinking. He didn't scare me. <laughs> what? He scared some people, but he didn't scare mm -hmm. me. You know, I, I just, I just, I just enjoyed him very much. And he was very helpful for me at, at a couple times where he helped me, um, secure my job one time, you know, mm -hmm. I'd been working there for several years and it was iffy if I was going to be able to cover, you know, some of the stand and stuff. And, um, he was in my corner, you know, because yeah. they liked know, knowing that pe they could trust people around that. That's, if that's why it worked so well, like, um, on the set, because it was kind of like a well oiled machine as crazy mm -hmm. as, as it was mm -hmm. like the, the, the stunt people, the, um, the guys who did all the, the bomb, the blowing up. I mean, I mean, every, everybody kind of trusted each other. The ADs kept it moving, kept the, t you know, they were, they were trying to keep it on time, but it was, it, there was a lot going on and yeah. keeping everybody in control and stuff like that. A lot of wheels in motion, a lot of plates in a the lot air. Of, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. But it, but after a while, cause we all worked together so long, it just rolled along and um, the different shows would come, the different directors, we were starting to become familiar with most of them because, there were several that, that kind of circled around. And then when our actors started directing, that was always, always a lot of fun. Yeah. But Avery mm -hmm. had a great laugh and he had a great sense of humor too. If, if you, you know, could get to know him. Well, that's, I mean, sometimes, and I don't want to, you know, this is the, the Cisco day. So we should say that, but you know, a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, the TNG cast was, you know, bonded immediately and all that. And the Voyager, the boys on Voyager and the, you know, Kate and Jerry and the and Roxanne were, had to put up with the boys stunts and all the shows having, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you hear them say DS9 was maybe not, not so um, ebullient. I don't know. And, you know, and all that, but then you, and I'm sitting here looking at this. Who, who says that? No, I mean, just, I, yeah. sometimes when they're comparing the shows and not, and everybody loves DS9, but they're saying, well, there's just a, but see, I hear you guys talk about a the just the overall the overall vibe, but also even to get back today. And so, Robin, like you sent me this one. Here's mm -hmm. Avery and and Mark Shepard. Yeah. I guess that's Mark uh -huh. Shepard. Yeah. Who would have a stand in for Morn? I don't know. No, he was, no, he was no. pretty believe, much. It. Believe yeah. me, if it's if it's Morn, it's Mark Shepard. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can attest to that. Many phone calls. When does Morn work in the next show? You yeah. Know? Well, I think I can be ready on Thursday. Oh, great, Mark. I'll just shift the entire schedule to accommodate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but, but, yeah, he, he was very possessive, I guess you would say, of that character. And, you know, he had a down pat. So, yeah, yeah. you know, who's going to argue with that? But my yeah. point was here, obviously, uh, he was, you know, after point point being here listening to you all tell your stories it it's great to go to you all because i mean that's why i picked you for this panel and that's why i love having you on portal 47 mm -hmm. and and the rest of the crews over the years you look for the folks that i mean sometimes you need a detail from someone but the truth is all tv and even star trek we have you know the long careers and we love to talk about the people like you guys that worked all mm -hmm. you know, a whole series or several series but the truth is there's a lot of people that just they that for whatever reason they come in for a year a couple of years and they're gone and they contribute or maybe they don't work out or maybe they're a writer that's only there half a season and they're gone and mm -hmm. you know whatever and it's when you talk about who avery trusted that part of that's just human nature if you mm -hmm. were part of the family that long 
that that that's just going to happen. So I'm and Jerry, Jerry Bono too is a, mm -hmm. uh, his yeah. Yeah, customer. And yeah. he'd, he'd yell for Jerry. I mean, Jay had a, a great, really funny relationship. I, I enjoyed he had, the, he had the kind of a uh, scraggly he had, hair. Yeah, and, he had yeah. blonde hair. He's passed since, but um, they they were really great together. I, you know, it, there's a lot of hard shows to do. I mean, some of the subject matter was hard, but I, I felt mm -hmm. that it was more normal where people kind of went along and they got to know each other. And then when they did, it was like a unit. You mm -hmm. know, like Dennis, when he would come in, he was part of the family. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody would, it was like he could be there one day or five, but he was, everybody was welcoming, I think, Dennis. Oh, yeah. I no, mean, it uh, was like we'd see him and it's like, oh, yay, you know, Dennis was here. Um, yeah. It might be a late but Friday, I, but it was good. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were there for a lot of hours, right, Lou? Um, yes. <laughs> Although um, not as bad as some shows I've been on. Oh, yeah. But yeah. It, 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 some of the effects stuff did not take a short amount of time. Because I, I thought the, I think the effects the people were amazing, too. Yeah. But I spent lots of time in the makeup trailer and the hair trailer, too. And I got to sit, spend some time with Avery and Ron. And, mm -hmm. and they were so fun at, to see every morning. I mean, it's like you were you're happy to see people, even though it was you're exhausted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was you what? Know, four in the morning, five in the morning, six in the morning. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the, sometimes the, earlier. Yeah. The, the, the makeup people were incredible. And I'd like to give a shout out to my second assistant, Paul Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Who, who organized all the makeup. He and Michael Westmore would go in every day. Okay, here's, here's all the people we're using. Here's when they've got to be ready. So you tell me when they've got to come in. And, you know, it was like an assembly line. Yeah. All I knew is that at four o'clock in the morning, they went through that door and they were human being. And at 730, they came out this door and they were Klingon. And or, or Kardashians or Jim or, or, or Yeah. And I didn't even worry about would that happen? It's um, like everybody did their job, you know, their yeah. job. Mm -hmm. But it was I mean, you had to because there was too much too many parts of it. Right. Yeah. Everybody was thoroughly professional. And I want to get back to the cast in, in Toto. I think, and back me up, folks, I think that Deep Space Nine had the best ensemble cast. Oh, I do. I think of, of, so of not only the Star Treks, but many, many other shows. I mean, on the, on the, ah, the baseball show, um, the, on the other shows, you, if, once you go like three or four deep, you start getting into actors that are you know, okay, but not, I'm not, and I'm 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 excluding the fr uh, the first Star Trek because those roles are iconic. But they I'm, were also operating under the '60s payment and billing. Yeah, um, right. But yeah. I mean, I mean, we had Rene Bourgeois, who worked for with Robert Altman, uh, Nana, <laughs> Sid, uh, Michael. Um, Michael Dorn. No, Armin. 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 Yeah. And, and my God, Andy Robinson. Andy Robinson, who played Garrick. If you were in a show or a scene with him, you better be on your game because he'd just eat you alive if you weren't. He was that good. My my wife, when she found out he was on the show, he, he had done a play. Uh, in Los Angeles called The Belly of the Beast, where he played a psychotic criminal in prison. Mm -hmm. She was afraid of him. <laughs> I, I said, he's a nice guy. I said, he was just. Well, you remember him in that, you remember him in Make My, when he Make My Day and he's sit looking, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that was him. And when yeah. I got to meet him, I mean, I, he scared me to death yeah. in that movie. But when he came on, it was just, he was just in, uh, the ultimate professional but also incredibly nice man yeah right, right. that's what everybody starts with andy it's like he was a scorpio killer yeah. Yeah. well and that's <laughs> he told me he told me once that after he did that role he got nothing but psycho killer roles offered yeah. him for the next year and he wanted to do something different and so he refused them all pause pause mm -hmm. what a dope i was because he could have made zillions if he become like essentially, 
you know, yeah. the, 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 typed in the way that somebody like Boris Karloff became typed, right. you know, but, but he didn't want to do that. We might never have had Garrick if he had done that, if he'd yeah. gone for the money. You, and you, would, you would have had a different Garrick. That idealistic actor wasn't there and went with the, yeah. I think the relationships too between the actors were, were really good. I mean, they had a lot of fun with each other, but they mm -hmm. also, when they had a scene, when they had the, they were, they were so good to watch. Mm -hmm. um, Nana, I, I just think she's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, actress. It was so fun to watch her with different, the different actors and with Renee or with uh, oh, yeah. Avery. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the whole thing at the at the time, it was hard to write the conceiving of it as not a ship. And, not, you know, because I always say yeah. every Star Trek is a pendulum swing away from what just happened, because you're trying to do yeah. exactly the same thing, only different. Well, and I, I so, also want to say as a background person or yeah. a stand in, um, you could not really leave that set because mm -hmm. if things changed during filming, you had to know where the changes went. So. Mm -hmm. It's like you you pretty much lived on the set. If you were in background, you were close, so you could watch anyway if you're working actual background during that yeah. scene. But um, it was not one of those shows where you, they yell for their hand and say, hello, come on in. And they come in and they stand yeah. there for five seconds and then they go and read a book. Yeah. You couldn't do that on that show because you had to be on it and and, and to help it move along too for, for the ADs and, and everybody else and be aware of where the stunt people were, you know, and, and we knew all the stunt people too. It was like, they were part of the, the whole family, you know, Tom and all of, all of them. I mean, it was like a happy day when they'd come and it was fun well, too, but it was a lot, it was hard work, fun and everything. And, and to that all point, up in one. the background people were regular on the series too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if you were, if you were somebody who was on the space station, you were probably going to be on the space oh. station every time you were available and they needed you. Yeah. Because There's, that's everybody, John. everybody was fit to costumes. Everybody was fit to makeup. They understood what they had to do in the morning to get ready. And as Robin says, everybody hung around and watched what was going on because they were invested in the show and in their characters, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, just another day in ops here, Rob. Well, you had you had your own costume. I mean, you actually yeah. had your costume with your name on it. And Bob Bob Blackman would bring us in to fit us. You know, it was like you, it was everything that, that was fun in that business. You know, if you weren't actually one of the lead actors, you were doing something that it felt like important. And mm -hmm. it felt like you could contribute something even when you were doing the background, you know. Right. And you felt like part of the, that 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 circle or that that family yeah. yeah and as an idea i could say the background were extremely easy to work with you know the there was no confusion there were no questions and there was no attitude which was always nice to see well they, i think a lot of them the whole the whole culture of background work on star trek because once they came in it wasn't like any other show too you I mean you tell me if i'm wrong here but it, part of the thing it was like a hierarchy to that and i don't mean in the bad way but it's like if you did your job well and you were a stand-in and and then if they wanted you dressed so you could also be background on a heavy background day yeah. and you got double duty and paid double right no Robin? no no, no. The same amount no, okay. you you were still paid as a stand-in but um you know with a and you got little bumps for your costume if you're an alien yeah. you get a bump oh, yeah. for that too yeah. but you're basically getting the pay you know you're not getting paid a whole lot more but it didn't matter to me because it was int so interesting to yeah. be able to be in there and get to know everybody and watch the actors that yeah. it was it yeah. didn't i didn't even think about that but one of the per but then one of the little weird little rewards was if you're around long enough and if they liked you i guess which means that's why you're around a long time but then the other thing would be like if you got a name right yeah and i yeah. never got a name but i was a lot of different uh like paul lawrence sent me into michael westmore many times i could send you some other um pictures at some point but yeah. i had ma many alien heads were many that, that he was creating women. that were sort yeah. of weird and then yeah. um, my my days of when i was doing uh, uh klingons you know that was always fun too mm -hmm. so i'd be Kling and when they had a female klingon Boom. actor there you go i would stand in for them and right. also work background yeah the same day yeah there Speaking there were a, a subgroup of, of the background who were basically heavy makeup background yeah because not everybody can take that stuff yeah 
and uh, you know they would they would be Klingons, they would be Cardassians, they would be all the people who who had a ton of rubber on their head because they were the ones who could handle it all day long. We had actors actually hired for the show who went in for their makeup fitting, and then had to yeah. say, "I'm sorry, I can't." They have it. a I can't. claustrophobic. Yeah, I, 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 I stood in for somebody like yeah. that who couldn't wear the cling on me. I mean, or whatever makeup she had. And there, I think there was one show, the Koreans, mm -hmm. with all the little. That was a tough show, because mm -hmm. the people had this rubber, those rubber bumps. Do you remember that? Were you there? Just the just the uh, scraggly skin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, was that was sanctuary. I had I confused paradise and sanctuary a while ago. But the other yeah. thing is, is they want if you if you could wear your makeup for eighteen hours and it, they didn't have to touch you up all the time and you look yeah. good and your hair was in place mm -hmm. and they don't have to mess with you that much. That was a real yeah. uh, right. plus. <laughs> and then sometimes you had to wear the makeup all day, and fight in it, right, Dennis? Oh yeah. This is you. And is who is that uh is that that's uh that's one of my stunt buddies, Mitchell Danton. Oh, that's okay. a rough that's a rough costume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you know, that is from the episode uh The Ship. Yeah. And the ship was my first episode. Lou, Lou, yeah. it was 123 degrees, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. I said, get out, you guys gotta get out of the van and work. Let's go. They were, in, um, yeah. they were in an air conditioned I, I, air I, I, I was yeah. I, I was in full nasty AD mode, and I real and then and then after yeah, a while, well, I realized that, I and balancing been, between having one of them keel over with a heat stroke though. Yeah, I mean, well, they yeah, were yeah. hydrating constantly, and they 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 had to put them in an air conditioned van to keep them a little bit cool. Exactly. But when it was time to come out, you know, but they See, could literally yeah, take their gloves off and pour water out of their glove. Steve yeah. Oster used That's to say, if it's a day with Cardassians or Jemadar and we're on an alien planet, you can tell it's going to be 100 to 10 on, on your <laughs> All the new and, neoprene. The, the, and, and, and it's the always going to be an attractive place, like somebody's yeah. gravel dirt yard. Or, yeah, yeah. He's you know, I, re I remember that day because uh, on the way to work, it was 4.30 a.m. I'm driving. It was already 92 degrees, mm -hmm. 4.30 in the morning. So I knew me and the boys that it's going to be hard to make this day. We're mm -hmm. wearing the, the that rubber. We're wearing th mm -hmm. you know thirty pounds costume. And the costumes are hard enough for the crew. They're wearing t-shirts and shorts, and some of the crew people got nauseous and sick. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It was it was the hottest day ever in California history. It was one hundred twenty three, mm -hmm. and I remember to make the day. Lou decided to keep us air conditioned yeah. because the minute we walked out of the trailer, I saw the heat wave, almost like fire flames yeah. going, the, <laughs> it was melting, going past my eyeball like a desert mirage. And I knew that. So Lou kept us in the trailer, put us in the van, yeah. air conditioned, kept us in the van until it was ready to run out yeah. there and get. And uh, I, was, well, I was working that day and I was in charge of bringing them water. Yeah. That's oh. what, that was turned into what my job was that day. It, it, was, it was so hot by by noon. I took a cold bottle of water and popped off the top, and I slid a mm -hmm. a hole on top of the Gemma door, and I put the bottle in there, and I did this bloop 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 yeah. bloop bloop. Water just emptied into my neck, and so I said, "Okay, guys, this is how we're going to make mm -hmm. the day." And I did it for all my guys, and believe me, it just kept cooling us down on the inside. It yeah. kept cool. Anything our brains were fried yeah. from the rubber. Oh, but you know, Louis did a great job. <laughs> yeah. Keep us alive. Well, you know? well, you guys always did a great job for me I, and for the show. Tell yeah, them about yeah. tell them I, about the deadfall that Tom Morgan did, which is one of the most impressive. Do it things. quick because I have to get us out of here. We've got to get out of the way for the next hour. I'm sorry to say oh. this has been awesome. I, mean, I knew when I got you guys together, this would, yeah. it would go like this. Well, hey, while I'm here, I just want to, we don't have much time. Lou, your job is amazing. Yeah. You're not just one person. You, Everyone has to be in sync with you, Lou. The props, uh, makeup, hair. You're you're helping uh -huh. to direct. You're leading the way. You have to know all the shots. You're amazing. And Robin, you told me a story one day on the set. You were, I saw tears in your eyes. I came up to you. Your grandma passed away. She was 90 something years old. And I realized then how beautiful and golden you are. You had all this emotion. And I it struck me that it doesn't matter when someone passes away, 
it's sad if they're 20 years old or 90. When you love someone, it hurts. Robin and Lou, you're amazing. Larry, you're really we cool. We all cared oh. about each other. Larry, oh, thank you for running well, us I got, I, got one, I got one more thing to say. I brought a special guest star. Oh, there we go. The Cisco. The Cisco. <laughs> Cisco. Yeah. I thought you were going to put out your action figure, Lou. What? Well, I said I thought that was going to be your action figure for a minute, but okay. No, that was, <laughs> my action figure would be a poor seller indeed. But uh, no, I found I found this awesome. in a as seen on TV store in Solovac, but it seemed for <laughs> even though he's wearing Solvang. the wrong wardrobe. That's good. That's good. And I haven't seen these guys for a long time. I, my husband worked with Dennis recently uh, on another show, but um, I I had to make he we wore the danger hat. I made him wear it because he said you were going to be there. And um, yeah, I have a, a warm part, place in my heart. And Lou has an incredible sense of humor. He doesn't, he's very dry, dry, but he's got a great sense of humor and just the best of times. Well, I think the, yeah. everybody in the chat has, I didn't even, I started to, but I didn't even try to look at the chat for questions because I knew we were rolling anyway. I've got to wrap it up, but I got to say, you guys are awesome. But this is exactly why I do Portal 47 because these people, that have the stories and the insights and the industry and how the industry's changed and just so many other people. And it's, you could do, you could do a whole nother show on, on some of that. I could. I thing, could do a whole, I could do a whole company, Robin. Oh wait, I am. Okay. Yeah. One thing about, I just want to say that about Avery too, is he was, mm -hmm. he was, he just made everybody better. Yeah. You know, and he was yeah. very loyal to, to his, to the people, to his people, to Ron, to uh, Jerry, to, you to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I really respect yeah. that about him. The best way to explain Avery is his character would give his life to save another and he would give his life to save us in yeah. real life. Well, and, we've, that, and you guys have spoken to that. I was going to say yeah. that jazz metaphor a while ago. Every time he would yell out, Madelone or, or Marcelli, he was just throwing the solo to you. In yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was anyway. respectful. He was very respectful. It didn't matter what you did as long as you were, you know, yeah. an upstanding yeah. person. And yeah. you got him a little bit, you know, you weren't thinking he was kind of, he, he's just really smart. And I just think you wanted to be better when you were on the set with him. Well, and that's what comes through the performance. And that's why, the, you know, DS9 and, um, and the fans here today for the Cisco Day. So I got to let's call it there that was awesome. love you guys thank you. good seeing yeah. you boy. thank you so much i'm thank just telling you. everybody watching yeah. if you enjoyed this then tell these con promoters we need more behind the scenes i mean i've been trying to pioneer this for 10 years well forever and uh this is exactly why there is so much more i say for all the star trek fans who have no idea how much star trek they have no idea about this is exactly why so yeah Check me well, out. Check it's a pleasure. It, 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 it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving, it, giving, and I realize how important it is to a lot of people. And um, yeah. it's 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 nice to be see to see people like this. That I, it feels like it was yesterday, but it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah it was last week. Last yeah. week. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, well, well <laughs> th that's because see, it was significant. It's not one of the shows you get on and forget. And say, oh, did I do that? Yeah, when it, it, it's not just the heat stroke talking. It's for no. <laughs> yeah, and I really feel like our I, I feel like our crew just everybody really cared about each other, and you know, and, and we were real with each other. Yeah, and I I, I really like that. Well, DS9 got stuck, got knocked a little bit about being the stepchild or the the middle child. The, the middle they, they may no not have known. They yeah. just didn't know who we were. Well, but now that there's 15 kids in the family, that whole middle child thing is out the window now. Yeah, well, so. I, 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 I still think it had the best con concept. It, and it had actors, great actors, and it had and characters. Heat bench of characters. Who, didn't buy, who, who knocked into each other a little bit. Everybody yeah. wasn't always on the same page going, yeah, let's go fly to the next planet. You know, there were, mm -hmm. there were subtext to things going on. It was much more yeah. interesting. To see these, uh, you know, it, it yeah. was more like what TV has become. And they, they they dealt with a lot of things that were before their time, I think. Too. Yes, right. Like yeah. it was it was risky at the time, but yeah, now yeah. It, it rings true. Yeah, it, right. It, it was one of the first shows to show a black nuclear family, and yeah. people always forget that they or never a single black dad raising the kid on his own. Yeah, right. Yeah. With, yes. with, with 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 a grandfather. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and LBGTQ. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, so early. Yeah. I mean, oh, we need another hour, guys. I have to say goodbye, but uh, thank you guys so much. And okay. again, bye, everybody bye, tell bye. folks you want to see them guys. on the convention stage. And and also, please like and subscribe and, and hit the button here for my stream, too. It would be great. Thanks, Larry. Larry, well, thanks, thanks for everything thanks you're doing. together, Larry. It was uh, great. You're welcome. And, and thanks Every to everybody. Time. Thanks to the to Ryan and Sorok and everybody at uh, Cisco Day. It's been an awesome day, and now there's more coming, and we'll make sure we let people go. Oh, yeah, here tell, is the- Tell uh, Sorok hello. <laughs> yeah. Gang, here is the link again for your next video. It's there in the chat also, so mm -hmm. sorry about that in the text, but there it is. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you guys again. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.